Savard. Savard looks for Ryder in front. Oh, what a hit! Think about dedicating your whole life to a dream. Gliding on the ice, scoring unbelievable goals, and celebrating with teammates amid the deafening cheers of the crowd. That's the life of an NHL player. But for some, this dream can turn into a nightmare. We'll explore the stories of skilled players whose careers didn't end due to injuries, but by their own choices. First up, we have Derek Bugard, a towering figure at 6 to 7 and weighing over 260 pounds. Renowned as an enforcer, he was the player who'd fight to shield his teammates. Bogard gained popularity among fans, but his tough playing style came at a cost. With 833 penalty minutes in just 277 games, he faced chronic headaches and depression. Sadly, at only 28 years old, he passed away due to an accidental overdose of prescription pain medication. Bogard's story is a powerful reminder of the hidden risks of fighting in hockey, and the importance of paying attention to mental health. Mook. Wow. <laughs> That's uh, what you call decisive. I think that one speaks That's, for itself. That, that kind of like, end your season. is one punch you can crush your face. Boogeyman. That's a name that's going to stick with NHL tough guys for years. Yeah. Now Bogart drops him again, this time with Fedora. You know, size, punching power. His, his want to really beat the guy. Moving on to number two, we have Patrick Stefan a highly touted prospect drafted second overall in 1999. Scouts were singing his praises, calling him a can't-miss talent with incredible speed and offensive skills. However, Stefan struggled with adapting to the demanding NHL lifestyle. He faced accusations of partying and a perceived lack of dedication, resulting in frequent clashes with coaches and management. Despite occasional displays of brilliance, Stefan never reached his full potential. He bounced around multiple teams throughout his career and he eventually retired at the age of 27, becoming a cautionary tale of unrealized potential and the crucial importance of hard work and discipline. Stefan's attempt at the empty net hit a body, that's why there's no icing. Bergeron fans on a pass, Stefan steals and he's the thing I've ever seen, Patrick Stefan. Number three, Marty McSorley. Marty McSorley, known for his role as a protector and enforcer, dedicating his career to safeguarding teammate Wayne Gretzky. Throughout Gretzky's journey, McSorley made sure anyone going after the Great One faced consequences. However, after leaving the Edmonton Oilers and joining the Boston Bruins, McSorley's career took a dramatic turn. On February 21, 2000, during a game against the Vancouver Canucks, McSorley got into a fight. After the other player, Donald Brashear, dropped his gloves, McSorley did something not allowed. He swung his stick and hit Brashear on the head, causing an injury. People, including fans and officials, widely condemned this act. McSorley got kicked out of the game and suspended from the NHL indefinitely. Later, he faced charges in court for hitting Brashear, and after a seven-month trial, he was found guilty. The punishment? McSorley got 18 months of probation, a one-year ban from the NHL, and had to do 80 hours of community service. Even though he won the Stanley Cup twice with the Edmonton Oilers, this incident is what people remember most about him. Number 4, Alex Galchenyuk. He played a lot of games in the NHL and scored a bunch of points. But recently, his time in the NHL seems to be over. In July, the Arizona Coyotes let him go because of a bad incident. There was a car crash and after that, Galchenyuk didn't act well. He was rude and aggressive with the police. Later, he said racist things and threatened the officers. He felt really sorry for what he did. The police report talked about him not listening to the officers, using mean words many times and threatening them and their families. He even said he had connections in Moscow. Galchenyuk faced charges for damaging someone's property, being disorderly, not listening to the police and making threats. The Coyotes gave him a contract for one year, but they cancelled it the next day. Number 5. Sean Avery His time in the NHL wasn't defined by one moment, but a bunch of controversies on and off the ice. People started calling him the most hated man in the league. He was a defense man who caused trouble for opponents and even spilled secrets about teammates, ex-girlfriends, and the NHL itself. Fans, players, and the whole league didn't like Avery. One memorable thing is the Avery rule, made after a playoff game between the Rangers and Devils. Avery did this weird thing by the goal, moving his arms wildly to distract the goalie, Martin Brodeur. It worked, and the Rangers scored. So the NHL made a rule to stop that kind of distraction. 
In another situation, Avery took a crazy dive after a small bump, making people think he was disrespectful. Even off the ice, he did weird stuff. In 2000, he got a $2,500 fine for saying insensitive things about a Toronto Maple Leafs player with leukemia. A year later, he made inappropriate and offensive comments about his ex-girlfriends, making his reputation even worse. Number 6. Danny Hatley He was a big deal, drafted second overall in 2000 with a ton of talent and love for the game. But everything changed in 2003. He was driving fast in a Ferrari with teammate Dan Snyder, and they had a terrible crash. Sadly, Snyder lost his life in the crash. Haley got hurt, but he didn't go to jail. He pleaded guilty to lesser charges and did three years of probation. Even though the Snyder family supported Haley, many think the crash affected him a lot, both on and off the ice. His best years were in Ottawa, where he scored 50 goals in two seasons. But later, people noticed he wasn't playing as well, and he wanted to be traded, causing problems. In the end, his ego and past mistakes hurt his reputation, and people criticized him for the rest of his career. Finish. Now Neal turns it over, and he leaves away. And that's going to draw some attention. He's trying to hit him from behind or push on his shoulder, but he gets all the way back out in front of him. When he hits guys, and he, Danny Heatley's had a target on his back from Chris Neal all game long. Ben Ferriero, three shots since coming up to San Jose and a couple of goals. Tries to check goal 11 now. Joe Thornton starts back along with Moro. Mouth and that's knocked down. So the big shark line goes to the... Number seven, Mike Danton. Mike Danton coached by the controversial David Frost. He got drafted by the New Jersey Devils in the fifth round. Danton played a bit for the Devils and St. Louis Blues, showing some talent but also acting a bit unstable. He admitted to feeling lonely partying too much and dealing with mental health problems. In 2004, things got really complicated. Danton got arrested for supposedly trying to plan the murder of David Frost. The same guy who coached him, Danton believed Frost was a threat to his life. After trying to take his own life, Danton made a deal with the authorities and went to prison. After getting out, he studied psychology and even got back into playing hockey. There you have it guys, these are just a few examples of talented players whose careers were cut short by their own choices or struggles. While their stories are sad, they serve as important lessons. We can learn about the importance of mental health awareness and responsible decision making. Beyond the goals and glory, these athletes are individuals facing challenges and making choices. Let's remember the human element within the world of professional sports. We hope you enjoyed the video, if so then share your thoughts in the comments and also share the video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.